together sort of a storyline. And yeah, so, uh, so this whole um, series of photographs were done in her wet wardrobe, her wet dress with him in the tuxedo. And um, all the spots that we, we picked out um, and it's a great background for to uh, to be a I said I guess to be a really good element that uh, accentuate her red dress or her red lips or her red shoes or her red um, hair accessory. So just you know have that in mind uh, while you are designing a session. You know what you want to do. Just be mindful of the, the background um, and you know to make your story to be very strong. Uh, okay. Hey Sabrina, um, huh? I just uh, Kate, you have question? Yeah, well, it's it's we we have just about twelve minutes left, so um, I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up. We're getting near the end of our time, so great, great, great. We have a couple yeah. of questions. I'll fly through the rest. <laughs> okay, I'm just this is your okay. your twelve minute warning. <laughs> Ready? Oh, oh gosh. Okay, yeah. Okay, so um, the the next uh, session I want to show you how I use blue color as a theme. Uh, this city in Morocco it's like so beautiful it's very everything is painted blue and uh, while you're walking down you know streets it's just like depends on the time of the day how the light reflects from like you know doors to the wall to the alley it's so interesting and I shot um, this couple two years ago as part of the Spain and Morocco shoot um, a couple from Hong Kong because uh, the flag of Hong Kong before the handover, it's blue and there's a lot of red and yellow with the British, um, uh, uh, in the, the UK symbol. Uh, anyway, so that's why in the shoot, I um, I, I suggested to, we, we should do a shoot in Chef Chowan as part of our session, because this is a very interesting, like out of the world kind of places and then uh, if uh, you bring in something like a red outfit that will make the place like, you know, it will make this whole session really interesting. But anyway, so this is the final output of the shoot and what uh, she is in this amazing red dress and everything is blue and there's a lot of red into it and also yellow. So just to, you know, I was really mindful of like all of the places that we shot somehow that, you know, keep, just keep these three colors in mind, blue, red, yellow sort of the blue, red, yellow. So you see a very repeating color theme um, in the session from start to finish. Yeah, um, so flying through fast, blue, red, yellow. So yeah, <laughs> and uh, next point. Um, yeah, so uh, what's really important is to, to post people like supermodel because um, everyday people, um, sorry, I, I say everyday people because we're not like, they don't have a lot of experience, uh, you know, being in front of the camera and posing. So we have to take our time when we're posing our clients and give them keywords to associate while uh, we're posing them. Usually the first thing I like to do, oh, okay. I wanna show you uh, also like uh, some common mistakes that I, I, I made in the beginning of my career is not paying attention to the hand, even though this shoot was well executed overall. But if I look at the detail right now, her hands were like poorly posed because she's not a mo professional model because she's just, you know, she's, even though she looks like one, like her hands, the uh, professional model, actually they know how to pose that hand really well. And if I will we shoot the same frame again, I will ask her to like move her hand back a little bit so then her arm is not too straight. Yeah, and then back in 2009, when I shot this in the Great Wall of China and uh, her head, like I have this uh, Trisha, black model, really beautiful girl, and her hands were a little bit straight. Um, and uh, two years ago, when I uh, shoot my client, she's just like, you know, she has no experience in front of the camera whatsoever. But I just keep that in mind to like, you know, everything, all the like, you know, if you can bend, bend it. And if you can arch the arm, arch it and just make sure it's not straight up. And the hand, when I shot this for uh, my friend, Crystal, she's not a professional model. Um, so the hand is very prominent. It just looks really, really weird. But if I, we shoot this session again, then I would uh, coach her as what Batata did is to hold the umbrella on the side rather than 
like this, yeah. So when you turn the hand to the side, it's a lot more flattering and small. And I guess uh, maybe it's not just Asian culture. And, and I think when the hand looks small, it's very like feminine, it's very uh, soft and then kind of quality uh, for the poses and it's really elegant. And um, so the first thing I like to do when posing subject, um, uh, if I'm shooting like a wedding style picture, it's to have the subject maybe uh, to, uh, like especially during light testing, you have the subject to look down. So as if the subject is not aware of being photographed, it gives a very effortless, effortless kind of look to it. And, um, or looking away, looking towards the window, looking towards the light. And that gives a very like effortless, it almost like this, as if you are a, an observer, you know, just holding the camera, but you're not in the scene, that kind of look. Um, so also looking up, it gives a very confidence feel to it. You know, it's like this like very attitude. I'm giving you this attitude. It's like, look at me, I'm the hottest thing in the block. That kind of attitude for the, when the subject is looking up. So when the subject is looking at me, looking at the camera, so uh, it's conveying a very like confident kind of look. Yeah, so like it expresses like very strong confidence when the look at when the subject is looking straight at the camera and then uh, also like you know tell the subject to like, maybe think about like you know backing with your eyes like look at me please you know that gives a very like you know sensual and very backing kind of look or like you know looking straight at the camera with the couple it's almost like you know they're you know proclaiming their love and like strong conf confidence yeah, or like, you know, having him to look at, you know, the camera, it's like with the bagging sort of uh, eye, it's like, you know, the concept is like, have him to think about baby girl, look at me. Um, yeah, so uh, point six, find, finding the right light and angle. Um, so to feature the wardrobe, and uh, when we shot this session for Rose and Marshall in uh, the Ritz Carlton in Shanghai, and she has this enormous size uh, gown. And so we decided to put her in this marble top in the in the president's suite. So in the marble top, uh, because it it shows it, it's like so then she can her dress can be like cascade down and I can shoot in a higher perspective, and that um, just you know it tells a really like it's a great wildness of the picture because the the it almost as if her dress is like water full flowing through kind of concept. Yeah, so like, you know, place the subject in a higher uh, place on the stairs that you can see the train of her dress and like, you know, the train of her dress. And then also like, you know, and uh, find like in Paris, there all, like a lot of uh, the metro is green and then placing uh, my, um, my client here, uh, Vivian, with her red dress, it, it has like really great contrast, like a red and green color. It makes the, her red dress even pop even more. And um, so this is about the back of the dress too. The, when the back of the dress looks amazing, uh, and I want to feature that and um, having the back facing me, uh, facing the camera and uh, and shoot from a higher perspective, you can uh, get the entire train of the dress. Um, yeah, put them on the stairs so you can get the entire train. And uh, but um, and then be sure to have someone to fix it and then like the, like make, make sure everything flat and uh, nice before you shot it. Shoot from a lower perspective or shoot from a higher perspective to get the train. And um, and maybe like if there's like, you know, like wind is just to have her flap the tail of her dress to show movement. So number seven, I know I'm like going faster. Number seven, bring some props and you want to be the prop stylist for your own photo shoots too. Um, and these are some of the ideas uh, that you can bring. I'm just gonna go through it a lot faster now. Um, so veil and like you know the wind, it we know it exists, but it's we can we can only see it from the movement of hair or the tool or the or the veil. So that's why I pack a veil with me everywhere I go. Um, uh, when I whenever I'm shooting wedding client or uh, the wedding style client, uh, the the veil is one of the best way to showcase win. And uh, one veil three ways, you know, over his head, over both of their heads or over her head. Um, or using the veil to cover up the signs, it says do not trespass. Um, or using like tossing the veil in, in uh, at nighttime that, you know, uh, it, it 
it gives a great highlight when you put the off camera flash in the back. Um, and using the veil as like a, like kind of like a direct, like a leading line that leads your eyes into the subject. Um, using a fan that creates mystery covering half of the face. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of times that your client asking, oh, what do I do with my hand? So if you ask them to bring a bag, bring a purse that they can like just pose with the purse, pose with, um, and, you know, just give them, give their hand something to do, just hold on to the bag. Um, and, or, it's, you know, have the bags showcase uh, as part of the picture. So umbrella, uh, it's also a great tool because your eyes go straight to the circle within the rectangle. Um, so I love to bring umbrella um, and, and when it's raining, I love to shoot when it's raining because it's just a, a romantic thing. And then it's a great prop too. Um, and and it works as a great way of leading line to the subject too as well. And transportation, I'm gonna go a lot faster. You know, like these kind of, like those like scooter or bike you can rent that adds more interest to the photograph, having that as a prop um, or mopeds, you know, apart mopeds, just giving them something somewhere to sit on rather than standing up, um, you know, or the reflection from them in the taxi, a taxi coming by um, or a re reflection in, from the lights in Vegas from through the limo, um, or um, shoot, shoot through the bus, you know, uh, from the perspective of the driver of the bus into the couple, um, or, you know, put the couple on the upper deck of the bus in Hong Kong, um, or shoot in these kind of like uh, vintage car you can rent in a lot of like monuments in, the, in Prague, um, or have their friends, or I don't know, they borrow back or steal someone's Lamborghini um, or a cop car as a prop. That would be very interesting. Uh, hire a gondola, you know, while you're shooting in um, in Venice and um, someone's yacht, yeah, or a plane, you know, that makes wonderful props. So uh, animals too, you know, someone's pet or the, you know, peacocks from the park. A flying birds, you know, or uh, ducks from the park, um, animals, um, hire a horse, hire, you know, uh, the horse, they pay a lot to hire, so they want a lot of picture, so be it, and then I get the horse, you know, horse ass and horse front and horse, you know, uh, just all, all angles you can think of, I shot the horse with. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Um, and then like the you know, camel, camel actually is a great prop, but um, I, I feel like when I first shot this and putting her on top of the camel, it, it just doesn't look very good. And then I readjust myself and correct my own mistake by just having the people on the ground and having the, the camel in the same plane. That makes it a lot flattering as a composition and picture. Um, yeah, so uh, human also a great prop, you know, and just, you know, being part of the, you know, this guy is telling them it's time time's up. I, I guess Kate is also telling me it's almost time up to, you know, and wrap it up, right? That, you know, human element in the in the picture, because there's always people uh, in the places that you travel to and include the local because that's gonna make the picture feel a lot more or organic and lively. And it comes it just comes alive. And in this picture, I tell all these people in the back and just can you guys clap for the couple and they like, say like bravo while they're kissing and they all collaborate. It makes a great shot. Um, yeah so number eight uh, capturing moment with the uh, maximum visual pack. So how to make uh, pictures come alive. I, I like to use uh, sports priority um, or uh, in a lot of my shots and and these this picture of like birds flying I have my assistant like tossing the veil at the same time and also throwing the rock at the birds to make it happen so then uh, so then the birds will fly in Prague um, with the A7R3 and I shot this one with the with the guy with the uh, flowing of the decks of the car so it gives like great movement and it feels very alive um, sort of pictures. And then like, you know, I actually, with the A9, I hardly ever use 20 frames per second. I only got to use a lot of like five or 10 frames per second. And uh, these were shots in the result of tossing veil uh, with the A9. Um, yeah, and, and, and twirling the skirts too, you know, with the A9 for 10 frames per second. And uh, because uh, point nine, gray lighting sets good mood. Um, 
um, natural light, uh, LED flash strobe. I'm just gonna go through it really quickly. Uh, light from the window. And um, so like this soft light coming from the win window, uh, when you have soft light through the window, it gives a very fine art painterly look. Um, this was shot in a whole overcast day at 5 p.m. And um, the subject is you know, here and then she's standing in the hallway and me, uh, the camera shooting and yeah. So, and then uh, these two pictures also has a very like soft light quality. It gives a very painterly look. So, um, and uh, from this picture, and then there's like a huge light source in, in um, on top of the stairway. It's like a huge circular uh, window sort of thing. And then one shot having them look up, um, it's okay. It sees the nice uh, back of the dress, but then the second perspective when I'm standing at the top of the staircase shooting down, um, that gives more flattering angle of her. Uh, plus the light uh, coming from the top of the stair staircase, it works as like an enormous size softbox. It just came with the venue uh, where I don't have to lock my flash or strobe with me. Light through the window. Um, uh, so um, also like, oh, last, wait, last year. Yeah, Kate, this is you in the middle right there. And then uh, we had an event at your camera shop at Glacier's camera. And towards the very end, I saw this very nice light coming from the window. Uh, back, um, through, I think it was like the, the sun shining on the, on the building across from us. And then this very nice light, really edgy light came in and we put the model, uh, we asked the model to like put her dress back on and take this sh shoot uh, shots. And then uh, these were straight out of the camera uh, shots that I pulled. <laughs> from the memory card, I haven't had time to retouch them, but it looks so amazing. And you can see the texture of the dress and then her earrings and then like her skin tone, it's so gorgeous. It's all from window light, find those edgy lights, you know? And then when you have really like, you know, bright outside 12 noon, the best way is to find these kind of window lights uh, through some sort of glass. And then uh, you can see great texture on the wall and on her dress and on her accessory as well. And, and yeah, great texture um, uh, through. And uh, these kind of like metering height lights uh, sh uh, of shots, you know, like you, this, uh, as you can see in this location, um, like you, uh, in the middle of the day, there's like huge like light source from the sun that shine through. And then I would just like meter and exposed for the highlights. And it create like really great drama for the photographs. And then using highlights only, um, these kind of photographs that can um, just, you know, convey eyes as a subject uh, or convey part of the body. You don't have to reveal too much, you know, and that shows the sexiness without showing every part of her body being exposed, but just using the highlights on the window that, you know, uh, you expose for the highlight. I, yeah, to, for a boudoir shoot. And sun, so um, sun in the back sort of a uh, light that tells a very romantic story. And every time like the subject, they're about to kiss in all the romantic, like you see sun in the back highlighting their hair. Um, and that gives a very like, like innocence and romantic kind of look to it and um, and warm too. And, and uh, also finding light from the side, uh, as I said, like meter for the highlights and uh, that gives a very edgy look too. Um, and uh, and what, um, a lot of photographers ask why I use LED. Um, if, and I like to use the, all the camera technology are a lot more advanced nowadays. And then we can shoot ISO to like 5,000, 10,000 or 50,000. And I use a lot of LED nowadays versus flash in the back, uh, back in the days um, to uh, convey like more of a glamour, sexy look. And at nighttime, um, when I was shooting in the gondola, the distance is only, I'm only five feet or six feet away from the subject. So I can use a, a, a just like a eBay, $20 LED for to light them up. Uh, this was shot with the Sony A7, first generation A7. And um, and I like to combine with LED with like uh, ambient lighting. And uh, there's a lot of ambient lighting coming from the chandelier. So all I had to do just use like the like the lightsaber, knock off of the lightsaber. But anyway, uh, to like kind of light up um, just like, you know, the subject's face a little bit. And uh, back then was shot with the A7R2 um, and I, and I'm looking forward to go back here to shoot it again with my A7R4. Yeah, so these shots were all lit by LED only. Um, 
just to give a little bit of a uh, uh, oomph of the light. And this shot is just like LED from the, the LED that came with the casino in the casino uh, uh, front door. And then I put a flash behind that gives their hair a little bit um, of a hair light of the second shots uh, as part of the story. So, um, so I think, um, Kate, how am I doing in time? Hey, Sabrina. Um I'm, I'm unfortunately we're gonna need to wrap up the session. Okay. Uh, okay. We, there's a I'm we help we're holding a little bit of staff back here and we and a couple of us need to head out. Um right. what I'll what I think I'm gonna suggest and uh hopefully we can make this happen is is maybe we can do a part two sometime soon. Uh, and <laughs> yes, uh, yes. we'll talk to yeah. we'll talk to Sarah and Hector to yeah. see if we can put something together where uh we could do a little bit more because uh, I know you have a lot that you want to share and I feel like you have a lot more slides, but unfortunately, I think we're going to have to wrap the session up. Um, no worries. Yeah, you share actually my very last point, the point 10 is just like kind of like a we we kept off, you know, just showing you more pictures of like uh, uh, some shoots from start to finish and how I translate that to um, from an editorial shoot into an everyday uh, client shoot in the same location, but using two different concepts. But yeah, I'll be happy to share that uh, on part two. And I'm so sorry, I didn't get to finish, but um, so it's just, you know, there's so much information I want to give out and right. I'm just, you know, it's just too, yeah, I just it's didn't a prepare lot. too much, but yeah. So yeah. I, I guess we'll just leave the time for Q and A. Uh, yeah, I mean, there was just a couple of questions that had come in um, and, and I'll ask those super quick and then we'll wrap up the session. Okay. Uh, one person okay. was asking what size clothing, clothing do you buy since you're not buying it for a specific model necessarily? So is there a size that you go for like twos and fours because you know you can clip them or? That's a great question. I, I'm trying to find a slide to show you, uh, but I try to get like something like a size medium and then the back is like open back with like a strap that you can tie in. Right. And then you can also like somehow like, like uh, expand too. So a lot of wedding dresses and also evening gowns, like uh, it comes with that nowadays. It's like an open back with straps that, oh, okay, you, I can show it here. Like open back with straps, you can like make it tighter or make it looser. And right. uh, I would just uh, get various sizes just in case, but just look for a gown set with the open back like this and you can tight, you know, tighten. Right, right. Okay. Well, we're gonna go ahead and wrap the session up. Uh, uh, Sabrina had shown a slide real quick there that was talking about upgrading your gear. Um, and during right. this week's Photo Fest, uh, we are doing a trade-in trade -in program with Sony. So um, you should have received information about that via the newsletters that are going out in support of this event. So if you registered, you should have received an offer for that. Um, basically, you can uh, bring in or trade in older equipment towards select uh, Sony and uh, lenses and cameras. So if you have a question about that, please feel free to give the store a call. Uh, the store is closed right now. Uh, we'll be back open tomorrow at 9 a.m. Um, Zabrina and everybody from Sony, thank you so much for being on today. Um, and we really appreciate your time. I'm crushed we have to end a little bit early, but I'll talk to the folks at Sony and we'll see if we can get another session on the line some point in the future. Um, <laughs> sure. and, and with that said, um, we do have more content uh, tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. Oh, and Thursday. Tomorrow's Thursday, right? So, <laughs> so uh, stay tuned for more content from us this week. Um, and thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you again, Sabrina, for being on today. Um, we really appreciate your time and energy and all of the information that you have to share. So uh, thanks again so much. And uh, thank you, Kate. We'll talk to you guys soon. And I hope everybody has a great evening. Thank you. Thank you.